So Jurassic of Kutch. Today we are going to discuss this topic. Jurassic is an important period in the Mesozoic era. It comes after the Triassic period and the total duration of Jurassic it is around 56.3 million years starting at 201.32 approximately 145 point uh, 145 million years so this is the entire span of jurassic so having said this the jurassic period it spans 56.3 million years and it was named after named after the jura mountains all these are taught in your ug classes so now you will have to tell me where are these jura mountains okay what are the type of rocks which uh, are exposed in the jura mountains okay this is your work you'll have to tell it to me now this constitutes the middle period of the mesozoic era and it all is also known as age of reptiles so if you remember in the previous class i had told you that at by the end of the triassic the large dinosaurs they had started to emerge while during jurassic the uh, reptiles they all proliferated all the sauropods and uh, they were so dominant and huge creatures that they almost ruled the entire earth that is why the jurassic is also called as age of reptiles now the a uh, the start of jurassic it is marked by uh, an important event which is called as the triassic jurassic extinction event triassic jurassic extinction event now what happened at uh, this extinct this juncture this extinction event so it occurred around 201.3 million years ago so it was a time period which marked the start of jurassic now in this uh, extinction event so we, as we all know there are two realms the seas and the land so in the marine realm in the seas what happened first of all all the conodonts they disappeared all conodonts got extinct it's a very important event you should remember this in micropaleontology uh this conodont which are phosphatic fossils they are very very important index fossil for end triassic because you will not find conodonts beyond triassic as they got extinct during the triassic jurassic extinction event so if a question is asked in some examination uh, which event which of the following events led to the extinction of conodont so you may be asked about the permo triassic extinction triassic jurassic extinction cretaceous tertiary extinction then uh, uh, cambrian ordovician extinction so answer will be triassic jurassic extinction it is this event which has led to the extinction of all conodonts then after this around 34% of marine genus of marine genera marine genera they got extinct 34% so this was the impact of triassic jurassic extinction event on the marine fauna on the land in the terrestrial regime what happened all the non avian reptiles non avian reptiles means all those reptiles which could not fly if you have watched this movie the jurassic park in that they have shown some uh, dinosaurs uh, or some avian reptiles you know bird like creatures but which were not real birds they could fly 
So all the non-avian reptiles, they got extinct, first thing. Apart from it, then uh, many large amphibians, large amphibians, they got extinct. Many large amphibians, they got extinct. I got a message that my voice is breaking. Can someone tell me, is it clear now? Swagatika, is, is my voice clear? Yes, sir. No, okay, good. Yes, okay. sir. No. Okay. Mute yourself. Okay. So, large amphibians got extinct. Then, uh, non-avian reptiles, they got extinct. Okay. So, this was the outcome. Now, this event, it becomes important. It becomes important in the sense that it vacated the terrestrial ecological niches. You know? Okay, there was one more order, uh, one more type of animal which was called as therapsid. T-H-E-R-A-P-S-I-D. The theras uh, therapsids, they also disappeared. It was a type of uh, animal which is believed to include uh, mammals and their immediate evolutionary ancestors. So, it was a kind of mammal, kind of mammalian fauna. It also got extinct. So, an important thing happened over here. That extinction of all these uh, type of organisms, they vacated the terrestrial, terrestrial ecological niches. They vacated terrestrial. Now, when the terrestrial realm was free from several of these organisms, then what did it do? it allowed the dinosaurs to assume dominant role. So, the vacation of the terrestrial ecological niches, it allowed the dinosaurs, dinosaurs to dominate in Jurassic. Why did, why does this happen? Because remember, whenever we are talking about the uh, ecology, then a very important factor over there is the competition for survival. So, it is quite possible that had all these terrestrial organisms been there, dinosaurs might not have dominated because they might not have uh, got the chance to sustain and to evolve. Therefore, the evolution of one uh, type of fauna requires space requires comp uh, less competition and probably that was the reason that due to the Triassic Jurassic extinction, the uh, dinosaurs, they became dominant. Now, this was a very, very quick event. The Triassic Jurassic extinction, it was a very quick event. You know, it happened in less than almost 10,000 years. Hardly 10,000 years this event took place and then uh, it, uh, uh, it occurs. An impor another important point you should remember that this extinction event took place just before the breakup of Pangaea. Before the breakup of Pangaea. So, Pangaea started at 200, the breakup of Pangaea started at 200 million years. Immediately before that, uh, the Triassic Jurassic extinction event occurred. So, another question of multiple choice comes over here that which extinction event occurred before the breakup of the Pangaea supercontinent? Okay. Several theories have been given for the, uh, for explaining the reason for this event. So, the first and which is the most common 
assigned reason is the climate change. So probably the climate was changing from Triassic to Jurassic and this event happened. Then sea level fluctuations have been observed for Jurassic. Sea level fluctuations. Another one was a pulse of ocean acidification. Pulse of ocean acidification probably due to increase of carbon dioxide or due to influx of gases through underwater volcanism. Some people also believe that there was a possible bolide impact, possible bolide or asteroid impact, extraterrestrial reason, possible asteroid impact. And then massive volcanic eruptions. Massive volcanic eruptions. So, as I just mentioned, that by the beginning of Jurassic, the Pangaea had started to break up, and Pangaea it broke up into Laurasia and Gondwana land. Now, an important event happened over here. Due to this breakup, due to the breakup of Pangaea into Laurasia and Gondwana land, it led to the creation of more coastlines. More coastlines. And this uh, creation of more coastlines, it caused the shift of continental climate from dry to humid. So, it caused shift of continental climate to humid type of climate. Okay. So, this is the uh, basic idea behind the introduction to Jurassic period. Now the Jurassic period, it is divided into three epochs. Which are the early, middle and late. Early, middle and late. So, if we consider the Jurassic system which means all the rocks formed in the Jurassic period then it will be the lower Jurassic series, middle Jurassic series and upper Jurassic series. So this is how we can define and the lower middle and upper Jurassic series they are known as Lias, L-I-A-S-S, Lias, Dogger, and mom m a l m so all these rock uh, you know series all these equivalent of the jurassic series they lower middle and upper jurassic series they are known by these names in europe lias dagger and ma'am so all these questions can also be asked okay so this is the start to it now let us see the ages of the jurassic period and what are the stages attached with the Jurassic period. The Jurassic period is divided into three epochs, the early Jurassic, the middle Jurassic and the late Jurassic. The early Jurassic, you know, then this is the Triassic period. So the early Jurassic is divided into four, uh, four ages or lower Jurassic system is divided into four stages. The lower most, the lowest is Hittangian.
Hitangian. So this age over here is 201.3 million years. After Hitangian comes Sinemurian. S-I-N-E-M-U-R-I-A-N. Sinemurian. Then Plinsbachian. Plinsbachian and then the Towarsian. Sometimes you may be asked, what is the uh, name of the last stage of the early Jurassic epoch? So the answer would be the Towarsian stage. Okay, so the I will not give individual ages of each of them, just the last age. So the beginning is at 201.3 million years and it ends at 174.1 million years. The Middle Jurassic again has four stages. Alenian, A double A, L E N I A N, Alenian. Then comes Bejosian. B A J O C I A N, then Bethonian, and then comes Kelovian. Kelovian. So, so the Middle Jurassic it ends at 163.5 million years. What is the last stage? Calovian. Late Jurassic has three stages. Oxfordian. Then Kimridian. K-I-M-M-E-R-I-D-G-I-A-N and then comes Tithonian, T-I-T-H-O-N-I-A-N, Tithonian. Tithonian ends at 150 Tithonian insert, sorry, not 150, it is 145 million years. So after Tithonian it starts the Cretaceous period. Okay, so this is the distribution of the uh, Jurassic period. It has three epochs, early, middle, and late, and these are the different uh, stages. Okay. Uh, in the Woods book of paleontology, sometimes while writing the description, you might find these names in, uh, for the ages of certain fossils. So if an Alanian age is given, so you should know that this is the Middle Jurassic age. So even if you write Middle Jurassic, that will be fine uh, for that particular fossil. Next comes the marine transgression during the Jurassic period. So the Jurassic, it saw a marine transgression. Now, after the Vindhyan, uh, after the deposition of the Vindhyan sediments and emergence of the Indian Peninsula, this part of India uh, remained a continental area. So, what happened here is that in the Jurassic period, several parts of the peninsula and uh, uh, low-lying flat regions of Gujarat like Saurashtra or a large part of Rajasthan or uh, the areas which were uh, extending towards salt range, they were temporarily invaded by the sea. So, which portions were under the sea? The parts of peninsula, they were under the sea. And then the low-lying flats. I'll just show you a video how this happened, that uh, flash animation. Low-lying flats, like... Saurashtra, then parts of Rajasthan, then 
areas extending towards the salt range all these regions they were temporarily covered by sea so all these regions they were temporarily covered by sea now these marine transgression they normally are of very short duration okay short duration transgressions these are of short duration transgression and they uh, normally you know inundate the low level areas so these they inundate only the low lying areas so what happens over here due to the uh, low lying areas being inundated by the sea they get converted to epicontinental seas of course they are primary seas epicontinental seas which are characterized by the typical deposits of clays sand or limestones so they may have these silicic clastic deposits as well as the carbonates now a question may arise that in the uh, normal shallow marine deposit so these are also shallow marine the temporary epicontinental seas they are formed when the sea or the uh, the transgression occurs and they cover the low lying areas so they have these deposits of clay sand and limestone somebody may ask you that a normal shallow marine deposit is also having such type of deposit so how you can differentiate between them so the temporary epicontinental deposits they differ from the uh, normal shallow marine deposits in terms of thickness then in uh, they cover only a narrow strip of the coast and the third one is irregular dip of the strata these are the three characteristics on the basis of which such temporary sea deposits or temporary shallow marine deposits can be differentiated from the normal shallow marine deposits okay now let us see uh, some information about the kutch basin as we all know it is located on the western coast of india now the kutch basin is a dominantly marine sedimentary province okay it is a marine province marine sedimentary province and it consists of sediments which range in age from jurassic to quaternary jurassic to quaternary here the mesozoic and cenozoic sediments they are overlying the pre cambrian crystalline basement so if this is the uh, let us say this is the mesozoic in mesozoic in kutch and this is the cenozoic so they are unconformably separated from the basement which is precambrian precambrian base okay the sedimentation in the kutch basin
it is started following a strong marine transgression which came from the uh, southern and southwestern side during the middle jurassic so in kutch the mid jurassic it saw a strong marine transgression and this marine transgression it came from south and southwestern sides and it all began uh, during the middle jurassic since the middle jurassic since the middle jurassic you should remember that the mesozoic sequence in the kutch basin is almost continuous so since middle jurassic since the mid jurassic the mesozoic deposits in kutch are almost continuous without any major noticeable gap kutch basin is also uh, uh, in strategic in terms of its economic importance and uh, there have been discoveries of oil and gas and uh, it is thought to be a potential basin for oil and gas now the exposed phanerozoic succession of the kutch basin is highly fossiliferous it is richly fossiliferous and it so uh, the as we all know that there are cenozoic and mesozoic formations so exposed phanerozoic in uh, uh, in kutch basin it comprises of a mesozoic sedimentary sequence mesozoic sedimentary sequence a uh, age is middle jurassic to early cretaceous middle jurassic to early cretaceous and it is rich in ammonoid fauna marine ammonoids ammonoid fauna okay then there are volcanic sequences of bedded basalt and what is the age of this uh, the volcanic sequence of uh, bedded basalt the age is late carboniferous late carboniferous to paleocene you know these are transitional events so several of these deposits you will be finding and then third one is a cenozoic sequence age of this cenozoic sequence is from paleocene to early eocene early eocene and then from paleocene early eocene to uh, let me correct it a bit paleocene early eocene to miocene pliocene miocene pliocene and this time period is extensively represented by foraminifera several studies have been conducted uh, on the marine sequences of kutch by using the foraminifera okay so in the uh, kutch basin 
we have three of these sequences. First uh, is a Mesozoic sedimentary sequence, Middle Jurassic to Early Cretaceous, and it is characterized by ammonoids. Volcanic sequences of bedded basalt ranging from late Carboniferous to Paleocene transitional times, and the Cenozoic sequence, which is ranging from Paleocene early Eocene to Myopliocene, characterized by the Foraminifera fauna. Now, in the Kutch Basin, the Jurassic stratigraphy the earliest classification was given by Stolik Zaka. And he gave a four-fold classification four-fold classification of the Mesozoic rocks here. And they were namely Pacham, Chari, Catrol, Umia. So, this is older to younger, Parcham Chari, Catrol, Umia. Recently, this uh, classification is revised by Biswas. And he gave the names Jurio Formation, Jumara Formation, Churan Formation. and Bhuj formation. But as geology goes by priority, you can still use these names Pacham, Chari, Katrol, Umiya. Now, the boundaries of these four, Pacham, Chari, Katrol, Umiya and Juryo, Jumara, Juran, Bhuj, they approximately coincide. Okay, They approximately coincide with each other. Now, the detailed uh, classification of the lithostratigraphy of Kutch. So, let us have a look at it. First, the Pacham formation. The Pacham formation, it is the uh, lowermost formation of the uh, Jurassic of Kutch with its age. middle middle to late middle jurassic and it is divided into further three beds the lowermost is the pacham basal bed followed by Pacham Shelly Limestone and the topmost over here is the Pacham Coral Bed. Coral Bed. The Pacham Basal Bed, it consists of the or the dominant lithotype here they are conglomerates at the base and then limestone the percham shelly limestone as the name suggests they have shelly limestone as the dominant lithology while the percham coral bed it is consisting of marl Mars. And this formation in the new scheme has been named as the Jurio formation. Jurio, Jurio formation. The Pacham formation is named after the Pacham island in the run of Kutch. 
Pacham Island in the run of Kutch and the deposition it began with the transgressive phase of the sea. Deposition began with the transgressive phase of the sea. The Pacham basal bed, it is littoral condition of deposition. Okay. The Pacham basal bed, it consists of, you know, uh, or it is represented by littoral condition of deposition. Means uh, that is related to the shore of the sea. Okay. Very, very shallow. The sea shore. Commonly uh, found lithology over here other than the conglomerate beds it it has clastic sandstones other than conglomerate and limestone which are dominant lithology it has clastic sandstones then it has uh, uh, yellow yellow limestones yellow limestones which are rich in pelecipod fossils or bivalves and corals. Of course, other than this, there are some golden oolites as well. Golden oolites as well. And I just told very shallow near shore littoral conditions of deposition. The Pacham Shelly limestone, which is the middle member. It consists of shelly limestone, mainly golden oolites. So the this is the Pacham basal bed. Now the Pacham shelly limestone, it consists of golden oolites. With shales and they consist of important pelecipod fossils and ammonoids okay probably they were slightly more deep and they are represented by the sublittoral conditions okay at the upper member the pacham coral beds they are uh, composed of biopelmicrite and biopelspherite limestone. So let me just mention over here. Pacham coral bed. It consists of biopelmicritic. and biopelispheritic limestones with golden oolites golden oolites they are rich in fossils of cephalopods mostly ammonoids pelecipods and brachiopods and they also indicate a littoral deposit okay some important fossils from the pacham formation which have been recovered and identified like the ammonoids they are macrocephalitis macrocephalitis then proceratites then uh, pona senoceras
All these are ammonoids that are found in the Percham formation. Then bivalves, trigonia, corbula, What you all should do is you all should search for these names on internet and try to see how those fossils look like. Then Eomyodon. The common uh, uh, corals that have been found like Montley Walsia. Stylina and then benthic foraminifera. These are the common fossils found in the Pacham formation. Benthic foraminifera. The age has been given as Bethonian. to lower Calovian. These are the stages. So these stages, they belong to the middle Jurassic. Okay. Now the next one comes the Chari formation. Pacham Chari. Chari formation has been divided in five beds or five members. Okay, and uh, all these are approximated with the boundaries of Jumara formation. Okay, starting from the lowermost macrocephalus bed is a fossil. Macrocephalus bed, then Rehmani bed, R E H M A double N I Rehmani bed. Then comes the Anceps bed, A N C E P S Anceps bed. Then comes Athleta bed, A T H E L E T A Athleta bed. And the to topmost over here is the dosa ulite bed. Very famous dosa ulite. If we talk of the dominant lithology, the macrocephalus bed, they are mostly shales with calcareous bands. The Rehmani bed is yellow limestone. Anceps bed is limestone and shales. Athleta bed is marl and gypsious shales, gypsum bearing. And the dosa ulite is all ulitic limestone beds. So this is approximated with the recent Jumara formation. Jumara formation. The Chari formation is named after the Chari village in and is located in Bhuj district. So the Chari conformably overlies the Pacham. So it is a conformable succession. It is a continuous succession. Okay. The age, the age has been given as lower Calovian to Oxfordian, that is late Jurassic.
Oh, sorry. Do that second. Okay, now the fossils of ammonoids, belemonites or belemonoid if we can say, ammonoids, belemonoid, corals, brachiopods, bivalves all these are uh, commonly found in the lower and the middle members of chari formation okay and the lower and the middle members of chari formation they are mostly having the situation of littoral environment of deposition environment but the top member which is also called as the dosa oolite It consists of greenish grey glauconitic gypsious shales which are well laminated with the limestone or calcareous alternations. They represent intralitoral deposits. Intralitoral deposits. And these are very rich in fossils. So, the entire Chari formation, it is rich in fossils of what I have just mentioned. After the Chari formation comes the Catrol formation. The catrol formation, it consists of six beds and it is uh, approximated with the Juran formation. So, what are the different beds? Let us see. The lowermost is cut coat sandstone. Overlain by lower catrol bed, which is overlain by the middle catrol bed, then the upper catrol bed, then Gajansar bed. And the topmost is the upper catrol shale. The dominating uh, lithology over here, cunt coat sandstone, it has sandstones over here. Lower catrol bed, it has sandstone, shales, and marl. The middle catrol bed, it has red sandstone. Upper catrol bed, it has dominating lithology as sandstone. Gajansar bed, it has sandstone and shales. While the upper catrol shale, they are predominantly shales. And all these, they approximate with the Juran formation. Juran formation. The six beds that are over here, they are classified in three members. Okay. Three members. The catrol formation again conformably overlies the chari formation. So chari is over here. Catrol. And then this is again a conformable bed, conformable succession.
they are richly fos uh, fossiliferous with littoral conditions of deposition rich fossils of um, rich fossils of ammonoids belemnoid pelecipoda gastropoda they are all uh, present the lower member it represents littoral condition while the middle member it represents the pro delta condition while the upper member it represents the delta fringe condition so the three members they have different uh, uh, conditions of deposition the age is upper oxfordian to middle tithonian late jurassic and the last one is the umia formation it corresponds to the newly uh, assigned bhuj formation it is divisible into three members again which are dominating in shales and marls and uh, the uh, lower member it consists of red sandstones they are ferruginous coarse to fine grained arenites which show finding upward sequences cross bedding and ripple marks and they yield fossils of ammonoids brachiopods and corals the middle member it is also known as ukra bed u k r a ukra beds it consists of green colored glauconitic sandstone and then it has shales with intercalated fossiliferous limestone it has yielded fossils of pelecipoda and ammonoids and it is restricted to lagoon lagoonal deposits or bay deposits okay and the topmost member the upper member it is also known as bhuj bed bhuj bed it consists of light colored sandstones and then it has several plant fossils of gondwana affinity it is thought to be deltaic to fluvial in origin
the age has been given as upper tithonian to albion which means it is late jurassic to early cretaceous okay so this completes the lithostratigraphic division of the kutch the, of jurassic of kutch so what type of questions can you expect from this first of all of course you can expect the uh, questions from the uh, uh, jurassic time period then jurassic triassic jurassic extinction and then the distribution of the jurassic then the about the marine transgression in the kutch basin then the uh, each of these formations you know what are the rock types what are the common fossils in over here while studying about the kutch basin it is very important to remember the different types of ammonoids that have been characteristically found from this bed yes sir right now the time period is of 200 million years and you can see the entire gondwana land the different continents of the gondwana okay now let me just do it one by one see the movement now around one a 190 see the uh, continents are moving away from each other and that line which i mentioned that the uh, emergence of new coastlines which you can see over here all these are the new coastlines which were submerged and slowly they started to emerge now this portion between uh, india and africa and it all started to move slowly see how this entire uh, Africa Antarctica corridor it came into existence by 152 million years which means towards the end of Jurassic and now this is here how Jurassic ended so by the end of Jurassic we can see that Africa and South America were still joined and Madagascar India Australia and Antarctica were still together when we will study Cretaceous then we will see how the separation of these four continents in uh, australia antarctica india and madagascar how they separated this is an important event that occurred during the cretaceous and we will see it in the next class